Hello, hello, my lovelies. Hello. Uh, Kirsch Mohan here. We're doing a road reflections. We're back at it. We're back into it. Uh, it's been a very eventful weekend for me uh, that I will talk about in just a moment here. Uh, quick recap of, uh, of the shows that we did. Uh, we did. Royal We, right? Um, I did, uh, I was in Memphis and, and St. Louis at the end of the week. Uh, and, you know, uh, great shows. Really, really great shows. Uh, I did uh, Katrina Coleman and Kunal Jotham's Yard Party. Uh, Kunal opened up his home, cooked some fucking phenomenal food. And uh, we were in his yard, and uh, it was a really fun show. Um, got to do the show top to bottom. Got to really figure a few things out. Uh, it got a little cold. I think it got a little bit colder than what uh, everybody anticipated that it would get. So uh, some people went inside to, to warm up and uh, hope that they could catch the show in there. Uh, but uh, other than that, it was it was a really really good time hanging out with Katrina and Brian. As I do when I go to Memphis, that's sort of the the, the old Memphis tradition is to is to see uh, Katrina and Brian. Katrina Coleman, by the way, uh, super funny comedian, and she's basically the reason that uh, um, I come to Memphis all the time. Like she basically will book me in Memphis. And, uh, and, and has, has been responsible for, for uh, you know, a majority of the shows that I've done in Memphis is because of Katrina. Um, and, and, you know, Brian knew Kunal, and Kunal wanted to have me in his backyard. So uh, I'll do that shit again for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I had a really, really good time at that show. And then... Um, did St. Louis at the Improv Shop. Rafe Williams set that up. Uh, Rafe and Bobby J. Cox are, are run, run a, a weekly showcase at the Improv Shop um, in St. Louis. And uh, it was uh, it was really, really fun, man. Like, we packed out that room. Uh, and they, they were a hot crowd. They were, they were ready to get into, uh, uh, like, the whole thing. Um, got to hang out with Chris Sear, got to talk to a couple people, um, the room is, I mean, the room is just in, like, what a fucking wonderful, intimate little room that is, uh, you know, so, uh, I had a really great time, um, doing that, uh, and I hope to see some of those folks again when I come back through, uh, in, uh, in the, in the fall, in the summer, end of summer, fall. I think August is, is my target date to come back to some of these areas right now. Um, it, it's like mid-August. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm planning out that tour as we speak uh, right now. Uh, but uh, I want to get into I want to get into some stuff uh, uh, about uh, about the, the last few days. Uh, and uh, the first the first thing I want to talk about. Is, is some of you might be privy to this information already, uh, but uh, this is sort of the long, longer version of the story. So, uh, you know, I, I hope you guys bear with me on that. But on Sunday morning, I woke up to an email telling me that my podcast, Forkful of Noodles, was completely deleted from Anchor.fm, which is the uh, hosting platform that I use for my podcast. Okay, that's where we're starting. Uh, so let's figure out what the fuck happened and where, where we went. Uh, so I get that email uh, on Sunday morning, right? So here, here's everything that led up to that, and then we'll go into afterwards. Um, I've been using Anchor.fm since last summer, since about, uh, since about June, July of last summer. And uh, the reason why I did that was because I was trying to save a little bit of money and Anchor was a free platform to jump on board with. And they had a lot of perks, right? They had a lot of perks. They, uh, one, they said that they were podcaster friendly. The, the whole platform is built, <coughs> built, uh, 
built for um, podcasters and making podcasters feel, um, you know, wanted and belonged. And uh, even if you have alternative content, uh, you you have a place on Anchor, and they would distribute to uh, various other, uh, you know, pod- podcasting platforms. Uh, originally, I went with Libsyn to do this. Well, uh, back in when I first started, I went with Podomatic. And I outgrew that, and I went to Libsyn. And I've been with Libsyn since about 2015. Um, and Libsyn was cool. It was just I was spending 40 bucks a month um, hosting my podcast, and I was looking to figure out, you know, can I that that might that might be a cost that I would like to uh, divert. I, you know, may, maybe save a little bit of money. And uh, and Anchor seemed to be that. Um, uh, that platform to go to. Uh, they also offered sponsorships, um, like if you, if you know, uh, other podcasts that might want to sponsor on your podcast, then you would you would get an opportunity to make a little bit of money. Uh, now, sometimes they also had companies that would want to uh, sponsor, but my podcast is so anti corporate and. Uh, anti-advertising and stuff like that I would rather sponsor some people that are uh, more activist minded uh, more small business oriented more issue driven um, you know uh, that's that's kind of the, the type of sponsors that I'm 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 currently looking for and that I would look for and so you know uh, the first couple months they um, they had some they had some people that uh, uh, wanted to sponsor with me specifically because I was a comedy podcast uh, you know so they they would send me other comedy podcasts and nothing was wrong with them it's just you know I had not listened to them enough for me to be comfortable to say I will sponsor the, the podcast on my spot podcast right so yeah I very rarely took I think I might have taken one that ran a short sponsorship thing. Um, And, you know, you earn a little bit of money from that. For every uh, thousand listens, you get a specific amount of money. And uh, so uh, back in August of 2019, I was seeing quite a bit of a spike on my podcast, both Taboo Table Talk and Forkful of Noodles, where I post uh, this show as well. Road Reflections goes on Forkful of Noodles as well instead of buying a third pod, third hosting podcast. And uh, everything was kind of, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a minute here. But I was doing pretty well. And then all of a sudden, uh, I mean, I was going from, you know, each, each episode was getting anywhere between uh, 75 to 200 listens a week uh, down to uh, 10 to 25. I was like, well, that's very strange. It's kind of strange. Um, you know, that, that, and I didn't really think anything of it. And I was like, well, I probably need to push it a little bit more. I probably need to plug the podcast uh, a little bit more. Maybe I'm not doing that enough. I, I, I'll work on that. That's, that's something for me to, uh, to, you know, change up on my promotional strategies and so on and so forth. Um, and I know I've talked about this a bunch, but. I'm the only person that works on these things. So, uh, you know, I work all day on this stuff. I'm doing, I'm doing four or five people's jobs here. And, you know, I've, I've finally gotten to a point um, over the last little, little while. And I, I still have to tailor it for when I am on tour. But my work schedule is usually I, I wake up, um, you know, make a little coffee, a small breakfast. I don't like to eat a whole lot in the morning. It's very difficult for me to eat in the morning. Um, but I will, the coffee and a little bit of food, and then I'll, I'll get on, I'll get on my computer and by 8.30, 9 o'clock, you know, I'm doing administrative stuff. So that's promo work, uh, emailing and messaging, booking, routing, um, getting in touch with groups, uh, responding to them, take coordinating a lot of the administrative stuff that I have to do uh, for for touring, right? So this is something that if I had uh, a manager or an agent or an assistant that I could pay, which I can't, 
and I don't believe in internships because uh, if you're going to do the work, you should get paid for it. And unfortunately, I can't pay anybody for it. I can't even pay myself for it right now. Um, so I do that the front half of the day. I'll do that till about noon or 1 p.m., depending on the workload for the day. And I'll make a little lunch. Um, and that's my break time. I'll, I'll watch a show right now. I'm watching Star Trek Next Generation again. Um, because why not? The superior Star Trek, in my opinion. I haven't seen Voyager or Deep Space Nine. Don't, don't get on my case. Don't jump in the comments and fucking start yelling some shit. Okay? Let me get through it. I'm getting there. There's a lot of shit to get through. There's seven seasons of the show. I only made it to like three or four seasons in the last time I tried to watch it. I'm dedicated to getting through the end. Okay, let me fucking get through the end of it. Uh, I'm working my way through the show. I'll usually watch an episode of that, uh, or maybe half an episode, depending on, you know, how I feel. But I'll eat my food, and I'll let it digest. And then around, you know, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., I will start working on creative stuff. So, uh, that's working on... um, you know, uh, doing research maybe for this, right? Maybe I'm going on the road. I have a six hour drive. I can talk into a camera for an hour, uh, and I'll do that. And, uh, uh, or I'll work on fork full of noodles, which I've addressed on this channel. You know, the schedule for that is changing a little bit because of the intense amount of work, uh, that I have to do to produce that show. Uh, once again, I'm the only employee. I do all of the writing. I do all of the research. I do all of the editing, I do all of the promoting. Uh, Usually for a show like that, there are multiple people uh, that do that sort of stuff. Uh, There's usually a team to work on that sort of stuff. It's just all me, Uh, it's all a one-man operation. Um, So, uh, you know, I have a pretty full work day and I'll go go till uh, 6 or 7 p.m. working on this stuff. And then the evenings are are, are free, free for me to do uh, what, whatever, whatever I choose to do with, uh, you know, if, if I am on the road and I get to adhere to the schedule where I don't have a a crazy driver or something like that, I get to, that's, that's the regular schedule that I like. Um, and, and and there are some adjustments that, uh, that, that I, uh, that I make when I'm on the road. So I have a pretty, pretty packed in schedule and, um, amendments can be made and, and usually do get made. And, um, you know, uh, I'm texting people throughout the day, catching up with people and talking to family and so on and so forth. And I kind of have to be like, Hey, I got to get to work. I got to concentrate on a thing. I got to drive. Hey, you know, and they are pretty cool about understanding that. Right. So that's, that's sort of the thing that I go through. So where I get bugged up is when I have to deal with bullshit, uh, like having my entire podcast completely get deleted over a completely bullshit claim, right? So the way I break my podcast down is this. I have a podcast called Taboo Table Talk, and within that podcast, I do a segment called The Dispatch. So those two get uploaded onto the Taboo Table Talk page. Uh, I have a podcast called Forkful of Noodles, uh, and and, and, uh, that's been going on for five years. And within that, I also upload these uh, road reflections, these sort of looser rantier things, right? And uh, for about the last year and a half, uh, for Forkful of Noodles, uh, I have been using music as an intro to kind of up the production value. Uh, so, you know, I can I can kind of be like, hey, look at the production value that goes into the show. Uh, there is a lot. I do all the graphics. I clip out all the stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you know, when, when uh, I can uh, push the Patreon or the sustaining memberships, I can, I can, I have, I have uh, kind of uh, physical manifestations of what you are uh, contributing to is the production value of, uh, of these shows. Now, um, the Road Reflections goes on here as well. And the way that I upload the Road Reflections is I'll upload the raw audio of the full episode. So like the hour plus episodes that I do, I will upload the the total raw content of that directly as is, right? I do no editing or anything to it. I don't add any any sort of graphics or or anything like that. Uh, And that'll go usually up on Facebook 
and on the audio version of the podcast because I know some people prefer listening to the audio rather than the video. I've got a lot of people that do that, a lot of people that specifically listen to the audio rather than the video. Now, since maybe the the end of February, I can't remember exactly when I decided to make this decision, I decided to add the the intro music that I normally put for Forkful of Noodles um, into the segments that I clip out. So that's the other thing that I do. I upload the, the total raw audio, and then what I'll do is I'll clip out specific segments, right? I'll, I'll break them apart into three or four chunks, and then I'll release them on YouTube, I'll release them on Facebook, I'll release them as the audio. So for these chunks, these little segments that I do, I decided, well, I'll put the, I'll put the you know, um, uh, uh, intro audio into it. Um, now, the previous one was from my ex-wife, got her permission to use her song, and, uh, and gave her credit, you know, in the description, hey, this is who the song is by, here's a link to go get their stuff. And then I would sometimes in, at the closing remark, I would say, hey, uh, our, our fr- uh, you know, uh, friend so-and-so has let us use their music as their, uh, their intro. Go check their stuff out. It's very nice. It's good stuff. I, I enjoy it. Uh, this current intro music, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably heard it at the top of the video, is, uh, is a band called Old Game. They're a local Pittsburgh band that I very much like. And uh, I used a song, a, a segment of a song called Blue from their uh, EP called Lunatics that they released last year. They came on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, to talk about it. And, you know, uh, it's a very good interview. I, I, I recommend that you check it out. And, uh, you know, um, so, they, so they came and talked about it. I, I reached out to Brenda Leeds, who's the lead singer of um, one of the one of the lead singers of uh, Old Game, and I said, "Hey, I really uh, like this song. I think this song, uh, you're, you, you know, uh, has uh, some uh, uh, meaning and qualities that I am looking for 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 a new intro to my show, Forkful of Noodles. Uh, w- is it okay if I if I use it? If I use uh, segments and things that, uh, you know, I'm not going to like chop your song up too much." Uh, I, I very much like your chorus specifically, that, and that's what it is. The, cor- the chorus is what the intro is. Um, and she goes, of course, you know, I have a message from her saying that she'd, she'd be very happy. And I said, well, I'll give you credit, and I'll link your, link your uh, Bandcamp page so people can go to it. I'll, I'll talk about it uh, as much as I can, and, uh, you know, hopefully people will uh, check out your stuff and uh, so on and so forth. So that's been going on um, at minimum since January. At minimum since January. Okay. So now let's get into it. I know this is a little bit of a, a longer preamble, uh, but there were some details that I had to give in order to get get us everybody up to speed about what's going on uh, and and why uh, what happened with Spotify and Anchor was so outrageous and so ridiculous and why uh, it, it was censorship. They were trying to censor my voice. So, uh, on Friday, I wake up and I have a couple of emails, maybe three or four emails. Uh, one from Anchor Safety and Trust team saying that, hey, your podcast has been flagged by Spotify and will no longer include new episodes uh, because of a copyright claim. There, there has been a copyright claim um, on your podcast. I said, okay. So I emailed them back and I said, hey, can you explain what this copyright claim is so I can try to figure out what to do to take care of it? Um, and that was a no reply. That's what happened. They said, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I emailed, uh, I emailed, I got, a, I got a couple emails from Spotify. Uh, so I emailed them back and I said, hey, what, can you give me the details of this infringement claim that's happening, this copyright infringement claim that's coming up, um, just so I can figure out what's going on, um, and just so I can clear it up on my end and make sure that we don't run into this problem again. That was the whole goal of it, right? Very professional email. Wasn't saying anything mean. Uh, the third email was from a, 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 a woman named Beth. Uh, she works for Spotify. And uh, this woman uh, said the same thing. Hey, you have a copyright claim. Uh, And I emailed her back. Pretty me. I mean, these are are immediate emails. I woke up at, at, 
at about 7.45, 8 o'clock in the morning uh, and answered these emails pretty immediately, you know. And uh, so uh, she none of these emails I get a response to, by the way. Uh, and I didn't want to email Anchor because it didn't seem like Anchor was... Uh, was was really the the, the platform that was uh, responsible for this copyright claim, and it just seems so very bizarre that I would all of a sudden get a copyright claim for this, right? Uh, so I so then I w- went on you know to a coffee shop, and I'm sitting there, uh, and uh, and I'm trying to do some work. I'm trying to do a little bit of research, probably for road reflections. I was doing some research for that, and. Uh, you know, get my notes together. And before I got into that, uh, I decided, uh, hey, uh, why don't I contact uh, Spotify? And I looked at their contact page, and the only thing that I could do is there's a Twitter handle called at Spotify Cares. And I tweeted out to them, why did you guys give me this vague uh, 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 copyright claim? Nobody seems to be getting back to me about this. Um, what's going on? This kind of seems like you guys are Get it, taking me off of your platform without any reason. Something like uh, It's not the exact tweet that I sent. You can probably go look at the exact tweet that I sent, right? So, uh, they told me to, to direct message them. I direct message them, and I said, I got this copyright claim on my podcast. What's going on? I, I, I write every word. That's, that's the other thing I kept saying, too, in those emails is... I write every word of my podcast, which I do. I write every single word that you hear coming out of my mouth. Every so often, I'll riff a little bit. Um, and then I said, look, I, I do these loose rants as well, but those are all my thoughts. And if I'm using information that I've read in a particular article, um, I you know do my best to cite the sources. <clears throat> and even when I um, use sources and, and video clips or audio clips or screen caps from other journalists, from other creators, I'm not saying that those are my clips. I give them credit for it. Uh, So what is the, what is this copyright clip? So spot at Spotify cares. So nobody's emailing me back at Spotify cares told me to email eventually, right? I I was sitting there for about an hour. um, And, uh, and I, and then I did my research and I had to get going because I had a six hour drive that I needed to make that day. And, uh, and Spotify Cares came back with, to me with an email to the um, uh, podcast team at Spotify. That's what they told me. Email the spot, podcast team at Spotify and, uh, and they'll figure it out for you. Okay. So I said, all right, that's fine. You know, I, I, I have a six-hour drive to make. Today I have a four-hour drive to make tomorrow. I will email them on Sunday when I get some breathing room uh, to actually address a problem like this and this is very annoying because like I said I have a very full schedule and I work seven days a week I I, I really don't I mean I don't take weekends off um, you know even on weekends I'm, I'm, I'm usually sitting and uh, tweaking material or uh, tweaking the script to my video or uh, doing additional research trying to get ahead on the following week's uh, writing and following week's booking and emails and press releases and all that stuff so you know, I'm a one man. Uh, I'm a one man working machine here, uh, and so I don't really have a lot of time. Plus, plus I also have to like do real life stuff, right? Like, I gotta go grocery shopping. I gotta uh, uh, pay bills, <clears throat> send out checks. I gotta contact family. I have to go to the doctors. Go to a therapist. You know. Um, other appointments that come up. So I'm, I'm also trying to live my life. I'm trying to have a, a, a real life and, um, pr- you know, schedule in some fucking leisure time so that I don't burn out. At, plus, I'm on tour. I have drives to make. I have shows to do. I have uh, sometimes I just like to go and hang out at an open mic and see what's going on in the scene. And, you know, so I have a lot going on. I don't have time to deal with silly nonsense. Let's just get this over with. Uh, so that was all Friday. You know, I put my best foot forward to try to figure out what's going on. And, oops, sorry. I know that probably bumped the fucking mic and made a mess. Uh, trying not to overdo that too much time. But 
So, you know, we get to Saturday, I get up, I do some work, and then I get on the road, I hang out, I talk to Katrina Coleman for a little bit, um, and then I get on the road to go to St. Louis, and I have just enough time to get ready, get to the show, do the show, hang out with some people, come back and go to bed, so I can wake up on Sunday and take care of what I need to. My plan was to do research on Sunday and start working on Forkful of Noodles about the Black Panthers, that's what I wanted to do. Now... I didn't get to do, to do that because I woke up to find out that Anchor had completely deleted my podcast. I didn't get to, to do a whole lot of that. So now I have to be on panic mode to be like, what the fuck is going on? And, uh, you know, like, what what is this, what is this situation? I got no warning that they were going to do this. I got no emails back when I tried to figure out what that copyright claim was. I got no cooperation from Spotify or Anchor. Uh, They just deleted my entire podcast. And what they told me was they had deleted my entire podcast uh, and removed it from all distribution networks, including iTunes and Spotify. Um, So, you know, uh, Podcast Addict or Spreaker or whatever the fuck, right? Stitcher. Uh, radio public whatever whatever podcast you know thing that 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 they had distributed my uh, my podcast to uh, it, it, it was it was removed and it was removed with no warning they did it at five o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and uh, so I'm in panic mode and here's the thing the the, the uploads that I had made, right before on Friday and Saturday well I'll say uh, I'll say Thursday Friday and Saturday were videos and I'm sure if you guys are regular listeners if you guys are uh, are subscribed to my channel and regularly check out my content you know exactly what the fuck I was talking about right on those days uh, because I posted up those videos and uh, and basically they were videos about Joe Biden and what had happened after Super Tuesday, uh, or, or uh, rather leading up to Super Tuesday and what happened after Super Tuesday. You know, talking about DNC collusion, talking about how Mayor Pete and uh, Amy Klobuchar and Beto O'Rourke and uh, all these Democrats are basically uh, vying to put Biden in power and, they're, and that they're, gonna, they're, they're trying to steal the election again from Bernie and uh, you know, I'm waiting for voter fraud, uh, election fraud uh, news to come out of Texas. And, uh, you know, we don't have reports from California, so on and so forth. Um, and then I made another one where I talked about Tulsi Gabbard, where I thought Tulsi Gabbard needed to be on the debate stage. And I think it's unfair that she's not on the debate stage. And, uh, you know, these are not secrets. I have talked about Tulsi on my channel all the time. But all of a sudden now we ramp up to Super Tuesday and I get a weird copyright claim after I talked about Joe Biden. Now remember, the raw videos and the raw uh, audios of Road Reflections, top to bottom, that I put up on, on, on the podcast, I don't do anything with them. I put up the exact raw audio that comes out. I don't add any bells and whistles to them. I'm not adding intro and outro things. I'm not adding little graphics or anything like that. You know, people that regularly watch this show pro- know that about this show. Um, so, all of a sudden, I upload this podcast where I talk a lot about Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I also talked about Elizabeth Warren. And uh, and then I get a, a, a copyright flag. Very strange. And then nobody wants to talk to me about what this copyright claim is. What, what I'm infringing upon. Is it the truth? Am I infringing upon the truth? The, you know, I don't think the truth has copyright laws. I think the truth is like, just get it out there. It doesn't matter who says it. Just make sure it's out there. That's what the truth does. So here we are on Sunday. I get my podcast completely deleted. So I don't know what to do. So instantly, I email all of the emails that 
that, that I could possibly email. You know, I, I, I contact support through Anchor's page because Anchor is the one that deleted it. They're the hosting site. They're the one that deleted it. Um, I'm, I'm going through their support page. I am also going through, uh, you know, the emails that I've had before when I've had to contact support. I'm contacting them with a fresh email, um, you know, and I'm just, I'm just kind of going through all of them and kind of the, the subject matter is like emergency, podcast deleted, please help, please restore, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I do a little bit of research. Right, I get on social media because I was like, I need them to, to fucking respond. So I start contacting, contacting them through, you know, DMing them on Twitter, sending them a Facebook message, doing this, doing that. Uh, and then I find out through their Instagram because I blasted them on social media because I was like, I got to get, I got to get eyes on this. I got to get somebody to fucking respond to me because this is crazy. This is completely ridiculous. You gave me no warning. And I've seen this before. This is how people get deplatformed. Last year, we lost uh, uh, like a couple hundred uh, lefty alternative media voices off of Facebook and Twitter at the exact same time because they said they're spreading quote-unquote fake news. These guys were anti-establishment, anti-corporate alternative news sources that were funded uh, by donations. That's how they were funded. And through a coordinated effort between Facebook and Twitter, it disappeared. It disappeared. So I've seen this. No warning. Their accounts didn't get reported. They didn't get any flags or any emails saying, hey, you violated our community standards and so on and so forth. Just disappeared. And that's exactly what happened to me. I got a strange copyright violation. Nobody wanted to talk to me about it. I gave my best shot to respond to some people. And then it was gone. So I'm blasting them on, on social If you can check out the Twitter thread, because I, 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 I basically went through, you know, between Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday about exactly what happened. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I basically blasted Anchor and Spotify. And then I find out after I did that um, that Anchor is owned by Spotify. They are a Spotify company. And the only place they make that known is on their Instagram page. Because I think you have to at this point, like if you're affiliated, like branded content kind of thing. Um, but it's not on their website. They don't, they don't tell you that when you sign up with Anchor. It's, it's not on fucking anything. So all of a sudden I'm finding this information out. And I was like, oh, this is a coordinated effort. Spotify basically gets to control who gets to be on Anchor and who doesn't. And if Anchor is sort of this distribution platform, this hosting platform for podcasts, this can happen to anybody. So all day Sunday, I tried to basically, you know, Share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all this stuff. Um, trying to get the word out to be like, hey, I'm pretty sure my voice is being censored. I got this vague copyright claim. Nobody wants to tell me what's going on. I have been asking, and they just deleted my entire podcast. I can't even get to my RSS feed to move my podcast off their platform. They've locked me in. This is censorship. This is controlling the narrative. Nobody was responding. So I got into a group. There's a group um, where uh, I guess people from Anchor um, like other users and maybe some support members uh, will answer questions or whatever. And I posted on there about what's going on. Uh, And I said, has this happened to anybody else? And one or two people responded. And most of them were basically like, hey, this is probably your fault for using music. And I was like, but wait a minute. 
if that's the case, why not just tell me? Why not tell me, hey, uh, you know, our algorithms picked up that you're using old game and we don't know if you have permission for that or not. So we're being, we're being cautious. Uh, can you show us something that says that you have permission to use the song Blue by Old Game? And I would have very gladly talked to Brenda and gotten a, you know, written something. And we would have worked it out. They would have had that for their records and we wouldn't have had to go through any of this stuff. But there are several oddities to this. If this was a music infringement case, aside from just telling me that that's what it is, you, I mean, you had plenty of time to respond. You had two days to respond before you just flat out deleted my fucking podcast entirely, including the RSS feed. You could have very easily... Uh, well, so so that's that's one. The, t- the second one is, I have had music on my podcast of some capacity, of some variety, for at least a year and a half now. So if there was a music violation, if there was a copyright claim, if there was an infringement problem, I would have probably gotten a notice for it last year, if not sooner. And I would have known what I needed to do this time around. But there's never been one. I've never gotten a copyright claim. This is the first time that something like this has ever occurred. And they make this drastic measure of saying, accusing me of something can't prove it, ignore my emails, and then just deplatform me. Completely absurd. Some point, and so, so that's, that's two. And, and for three, remember the day before that I got this copyright claim, the two episodes that I had uploaded did not have the music associated with it. They were two episodes that didn't have the intro. They didn't have the intro. So the so the notion that there is there is music violation that these people were saying on the, in this group doesn't even make any sense so I'm bl- I'm just going off on Twitter and, and stuff because I'm I don't know what to do I'm, I mean this is all this is all day Sunday and I do my best and I uh, tell my friend Lee camp and Lee was like, well, let me know what happens tomorrow. And if, if they don't, if they don't bring it back, then we'll, we'll do something. We'll, we'll start a Twitter campaign or, or some shit. And, uh, and I said, look, I think uh, I'm, I'm being censored for my political content. And a couple of people in the group were like, well, Michael Moore's on, 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 uh, anchor. Michael Moore uses anchor. I was like, that's nice. And Lee can't point this out later, but, uh, when you deplatform someone as big as Michael Moore, it becomes a major problem. But I'm not that famous. I have a couple hundred people on YouTube that, that follow my stuff. I have a about a little over 3,000 people on my Facebook, uh, and my Facebook's pretty 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 suppressed as well because you know my videos only go out to a handful of people. I mean maybe like. 50 or 60 people at most is what that reach is. You know, that's who gets to really see my content. And YouTube's not putting me up on my on the recommended pages as much either. Um, and I 
I, I have some people that, like I said, some people that listen to my podcast. You know, uh, when Anchor was giving me statistics, which I never really understood their statistics, to be honest. Uh, Libsyn and I think a couple other podcasting networks kind of give you a little bit clearer of statistics. Uh, their statistics were, that was sort of a, a, a major downfall for them. I never understood their statistics. I was never really able to get good statistics from them. Um, and that, I, that might have been done by design because that's what I kind of need to, if I'm going to try to make a sponsor packet to be like, hey, look, this is our average for the last three months. This is our average for uh, the last 30 days. Here's how we do on a yearly basis. This is the, the regions and so on and so forth, right? And, they, and their statistics were not particularly great, but they don't want other people to go out and seek their own sponsors, uh, which I'm, I'm probably going to have to do. Uh, I still have my sustaining memberships, but I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna have to push uh, to the, to get some sponsors here in the uh, in the in the coming few months. Um, anyway, I had maybe uh, an estimated amount of I think anywhere between 15 and 25 people listening to my podcast in a given week uh, is what they estimated it to be. So look, I'm a small fry. I'm not Jimmy Dore. I'm not Ron Placone. I'm not Lee Camp. I don't. I'm not Graham Elwood. I don't. I don't have a a, a a massive following. But I got some people. I got some people that watch my shit. I got some people that follow my stuff, and I appreciate those people. The shares and the likes and and people commenting and and communicating. I, I appreciate. I like that. It's a small community. That, uh, that follows my stuff. And, I, and, you know, I really appreciate all the comments and stuff. So it's very easy to censor someone like me. So I was going to do a Hard Lens Media interview on Monday. And I messaged them and I was like, hey, this is something that's going on. And they were very, they were like, yeah, we got to talk to that because that's super fucked up. What's going on there? And I said, yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, so Monday I get an email again. Uh, hey, um, we had to delete your podcast because of a potential copyright claim. So they don't even have confirmation. They were just like, maybe, maybe there might be a copyright violation on your account. We, we haven't figured it out. We haven't found out. But we're going to delete it as if we have found concrete evidence um, and just fuck your life up for a couple days. And, uh, and you're just going to have to deal with it because we're Spotify. We make a shit ton of money on the backs of the artists and we pay them fractions of a penny per stream and listen. That's what you do. They, they, don't, get, they don't pay their fucking artists very much um, unless, like, you know, it, they're, they're working with record labels and shit like that so to have your music on spotify and itunes is sort of a point of prestige more than anything else right like oh look i'm there at the on the mainstream i get to like i'm i'm on the i'm on the mainstream the mainstream status quo is 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 validating me so i basically responded to them and I said, look, you deleted my podcast on a potential. Can you tell me what this copyright claim is? I've been asking for the last couple of days and no one seems to be able to respond to me. I've been, I've been on, on social media trying to get answers and nobody seems to be able to give me some answers. And I think this is ridiculous. Um, I think what you guys are doing is 100% censorship. Uh, no one, if you can't give me specifics and details about what I did wrong, how am I supposed to correct it? I'm asking you for details so that I can t I can fucking take care of the problem on my end. I'm I'm if the, if I did do something wrong, if I did do something wrong, I would like the opportunity to correct the error if there's even an error. And there might not be an error. So, uh, they don't respond to me. Anchor gets back to me, says the same thing. There was a music infringement. Tell me what the music infringement was. Can you give me details? No, that's, that's got to be Spotify. Spotify's got to do that. 
Well, Spotify's not giving me any fucking answers. So then, uh, my friend Mark Viola tweets out a couple of couple of the people that a couple of the regular listeners find out about it. Uh, you know, gorgeous Greg. Uh, I think uh, 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 maybe a few other people that were like, "Hey, this is fucked up. What what's going on? Why can't we see your podcast? Um, it's not refreshing on our feeds, and so on and so forth." Um, so. You know, um, I'm telling them what's going on. They're all tweeting at Anchor and Spotify now. Uh, and then uh, my friend Lee Camp gets involved. And I basically told him what was going on. And Lee Camp sent a tweet out. And that got a bunch of people on it. And then all of a sudden, right after Lee's, right after Lee's tweet, Spotify cares. That Twitter account that I uh, DM'd on Friday, they get on and goes, Hey, we just DM'd you with some details about what's going on. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and, and that's when Lee pointed out, hey, high profile people don't get fucking blacked out like this. Small fries do. Chris is, Chris is, Chris is, a, uh, is not as famous as Michael Moore. So I get into the DM. And basically what they said was, hey, our podcast team is investigating what happened. It's very strange. Is it? Or is it that you flagged my account because of, you know, anti-establishment content? Political content that was talking about a, a outsider candidate like Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard. That I wasn't praising and, and uh, you know, nuzzling up to the dicks of the DNC. And they are a multi-dicked organization. You know, when you're when you're when you're fucking so many people across the country, when you need to fuck a vast amount of uh, of the middle class, you got to have several dicks. You got to got several dicks going at the same time. That's what you got to do. So, you know, I'm uh, uh, I wait all day. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna let this thing kind of play itself out. Update the Twitter thread. Um, Thank you to Lee and Mark and all the people that did tweet at them and, uh, you know, send them messages and uh, share the posts and all that. Uh, very, very, very much appreciated. Uh, so Lee, I told Lee what was going on. I updated him and uh, he was like, all right, I'm taking the tweet down. If they're investigating it, keep me posted on what happens. If, if, if they don't bring it back, then we're going to have to do something more, obviously. And, uh, and, and so... You know, all day on Monday, I, I, I got nothing. I got no word. And I emailed, uh, I emailed uh, the podcast uh, email account at Spotify. And I said, look, uh, you guys, I've been waiting all day for some kind of response. You guys have given me nothing. You, I got a Twitter handle that's telling me that, you know, you're, you're investigating what's going on. But nobody's giving me any details of what the hell happened. Uh, if, there, if, if, if you guys, uh, uh, guys could have just emailed me and been like, we're, we're going to investigate this and put your account on hold for a little while, but you didn't. You deleted my whole account. This is censorship. This is how censorship works. Uh, so, you know, you guys are you, pushing this copyright claim thing uh, pretty hard here. I have several emails telling me about this, um, and, uh, and I think this is, this is wrong. You don't, you don't accuse somebody falsely of doing something without proof and then punishing them uh, that way. I mean, I know that's how our criminal justice system works, uh, but, uh, but Spotify is not a criminal justice system. So why are you working like that? Got no response from that. So that was Monday. And on Tuesday morning, I get an email, you know, from the podcaster email uh, from Spotify. And they said, hey, good news, we're reinstating your account in 48 hours. What? Okay, great. Thanks. What happened? I still don't have any answers from you guys. And and then I get an email back from Beth, that woman from way earlier. And she goes, uh, hey, I can't really give you any answers or details about what happened just know that you got a you got a copyright claim on your content and we and we take uh, our, uh, what, what we have to do is take you off of our platform 
when any of that stuff comes in. So you don't even investigate it. You just fucking, you're just like, oh, copyright claim. So you can just say that there was a copyright claim, not show any evidence, internally figure some shit out and take my fucking podcast down. And if I happen to be on Anchor, which is a company that Spotify fucking owns, you can completely remove me from everything. You can completely deplatform somebody. If you don't like what they're saying, if you don't like what they're doing, you can just say that there's a copyright claim, give them no proof of that, give them no opportunity to rectify it, and then completely deplatform them. That's how Spotify is now operating. That's how Facebook operates in their censorship. Twitter operates in their censorship. YouTube. Now Spotify's joining it. So I asked them again and again. I was like, hey, give me the details of what's going on because what you guys did is a complete violation of of my First Amendment rights. You guys aren't letting me express myself. You guys aren't proving that I did anything wrong to begin with. And you censored me. Then I get a response from Anchor telling me, hey, we're working on reinstating your podcast. You should have it up. You should be able to log into your account now. I wasn't even able to log into my account, by the way. The whole thing was fucking gone. Uh, So I logged in. All my stats were removed, right? Uh, They were all zeroed out. Uh, There were no stats on my account at all. So they, like, took away all of my listens, maybe? There's a very good chance that they did that. I'm pretty sure they took away the listens. 100%. I haven't. I, I need to go back and, and double check it. But when I when I got back in, um, I I had zero, like zero listens on everything. I had no statistics at all. My listeners. I mean, they could have unsubscribed everybody that listened to the podcast. So do me a favor and check if you're still subscribed on whatever podcasting platform um, you use to listen to my podcast because they might have unsubscribed all of you. So I, you know, I was like, hey, what's going on? And they were like, oh, it'll, it'll all come back, blah, blah, blah. Here, we restored your podcast page, right? This is where things get crazy. And I said, thank you for restoring it, but I don't think it should have been taken down in the first place. Um, I think you guys censored me. You guys gave me this copyright claim. Nobody's been able to give me an answer for it. You guys can't figure out what the hell happened. And so this is where things get a little crazy. So my podcast comes back up. Nobody's giving me any answers about the copyright claim. Then on Twitter, I get a little message. Now remember, I have two different podcasts, right? That I host with Anchor or I hosted with Anchor. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, They sent me a link saying, hey, on, on Twitter, they sent me a DM responding to my why did you deplatform me message. And they said, oh, hey, you had a weird thing that happened this weekend. We had an outage. Can you believe it? An outage. And it accidentally deleted your podcast. But everything's fine. Your podcast has been live the whole time. It just seemed like it was deleted. It actually wasn't, though. It's back. You know, it's been on all these other platforms the whole time. Here's a link to your podcast page. And they send me the Taboo Table Talk link. So now they're claiming that it's some sort of an outage that happened. And, uh, hey, don't worry about the copyright. We're just going to pretend like that didn't happen. Literally pretending like the copyright claim stuff didn't happen. So (laughs) I respond back to them saying, hey, that's not the podcast that got taken down. I have two different podcasts. The other one is called Four Full of Noodles, and that 100% got deleted. I have emails. I have screenshots of emails saying what, saying that the, I have proof saying that you guys deleted my podcast, and it came right after a copyright claim, which came right after I made some anti-establishment fucking videos. And look, I've, I've been making these videos forever. All of a sudden now they decided to target it.
not five minutes after that, I get an email back from the support team that I've been talking to saying, hey, your podcast is totally back up. Isn't that exciting? Look, your podcast is back up. Here's the link. You know what happened? We just actually checked. Uh, There was an outage. Crazy. It was so nuts. There was an outage uh, in our... uh, in our system that that uh, accidentally said that your podcast was deleted and, and restricted your access to get into your account. What a not-so thing. Oh, my God. So sorry for the inconvenience. So that's two reports. In the same fucking email thread, by the way, I have them claiming that what my podcast got flagged for was a copyright claim. And then all of a sudden, I'm talking to them about how I've been censored, violation of First Amendment rights, not allowing to express myself and deplatforming me without any sort of warning. And you're like, oh, the way that happened, outage, outages, that sometimes it happens, right? Sometimes what will happen is like just things will disappear from the internet and it's just an outage. That's all it is. You know, it's like a power outage. This is. You get it. You understand. You're a smart guy, right? And they kind of condescend to you. So immediately, I I saw that as a massive red flag and was like, you know, I got to get the fuck off this platform. And that's what I did. So now I'm I'm back on um, Libsyn. So I got to pay 40 bucks a month again. Um, so uh, <laughs> to people that are already sustaining members... Uh, just to let you know, uh, the goals on my Patreon page, I'm going to have to make them go up by 40 bucks a month because now my expenses have gone up uh, by 40 bucks a month. And I'm getting super fucking censored. So, um, yeah. Uh, very strange that they went from copyright claim, deletion, restoration to outage. And they're completely ignoring that I have all of these emails. They're trying to rewrite history, and this is what they do, right? Corporate media does this shit all the time. They do this shit all the time, where they like try to rewrite history all the time. They didn't give me any explanation for it, and then they were like, outage. What about the copyright claim? No, 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 it's an outage. What, what, what you misunderstood is your eyes are probably too stupid to read the words. Uh, so what you saw as co- was at, what you saw as copyright was actually outage. Are you foreign? You probably don't understand our language very well. Uh, that's probably what it is. See, uh, it's outage and copy. They look very similar. You know, a lot of curvy letters in there. So your brain uh, and your eyes not understanding the complexities uh, and and the strength of the English language because your eyes and brain are too weak. You probably just couldn't see those words. They deplatformed me. They censored me for fucking seventy-two hours. So I moved them all. I moved, I'm, I'm back on Libsyn. Uh, I've got my accounts all set up. Um, so um, don't listen to my shit on Spotify unless you absolutely fucking have to. It's available on Stitcher. Uh, it's available on Radio Public. I'll put them up on YouTube. Uh, they're available on my Facebook page. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to go to some alternative video platforms. I found one uh, via Graham Elwood that I'm trying to trying to get on. Um, and, uh, you know, because this is ridiculous. This is 100% ridiculous. Look, and it can happen to me. It can basically happen to, to anyone. I'm a small fry. Not a lot of people know who I am. So, you know, that's it. That's that's basically what happened. This took uh, a little bit longer than what I anticipated, so I'm going to do two parts where I'm going to... The, the rest of the road reflections will come in a, in a separate video. Uh, but uh, I wanted... I, I mean, I, I wanted to tell you guys about what happened uh, because it's it was nuts. And, uh, you know, keep an eye out for this sort of stuff. When somebody says that they've been completely deplatformed and they, and they don't know why, that, yeah, there's probably, it's probably true. They probably don't know. They make these vague accusations 
and then they and then they don't provide any evidence, uh, and then they punish you, as if that as if there is mounting evidence uh, against you for the accusations. That's not how you run things. That's unfair. It's not equality. Anchor doesn't care about its podcasters. Spotify doesn't care about its podcasters. They're not looking for independent content. They want content that's going to toe the motherfucking line. They want you to. They want you to go and be like, "Any blue will do." But no, the fuck it won't. Next video I put out will explain to you why any blue won't do. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's bring this video to uh, to an end here. Uh, we'll pick up. Uh, I've got some some notes here that I want to get to, so I'll I'll do that in a separate video. It'll be like a two part video that I'll release uh, over the next uh, next few days here. Uh, and uh, look, um, I have a couple different ways that you can help out. First of all, please make sure that you're subscribed to what I'm doing. Um, it, you know, I'm I'm probably due to get more attacks on my page, more censorship on my, uh, on my accounts. Uh, so please make sure that you're still subscribed. If you, if you are, if you know that you're a subscriber, make sure that you're still subscribed. Um, hit that bell, make sure you're getting notifications from me. Um, and I'm going to be putting out a bunch of more videos. It's kind of a crazy hectic time in politics right now. So, uh, they're going to lean heavy towards the election is the content that's coming out. Um, I am working on some stuff about uh, the Black Panthers, uh, uh, about, um, you know, uh, income disparity. Uh, white, the ACLU released something called the White Papers that I want to talk about. That's a, that's a uh, 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 privacy uh, measure. Um, you know, I've got some topics that I want to talk about. And if you would like to help with um, with donating because as I mentioned I'm the only person that does this stuff so I do a lot of work to get these videos out especially Forkful of Noodles even Taboo Table Talk has, has a, a, a decent bit of production behind it um, you can donate you can become a sustaining member um, there's a bunch of people that are already sustaining members and I very much thank you guys for doing that I appreciate you guys for doing that um, if you would like to uh, patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha that's a good way to do it. Uh, or you can go directly on my website if Patreon's not your bag. Uh, I got uh, uh, these big orange buttons right on my homepage at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, various different tiers that give you a couple different um, rewards and stuff. Uh, so it's similar to the Patreon. It's just a different way to, to donate that you don't have to go through Patreon. You're going directly through my website to do it. Uh, so yeah, uh, come see me live. Come see me live. I've got tour dates coming up. Chicago, Indianapolis, album recording in Washington, D.C. and Williamsport and the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm opening for Lee Camp. Uh, I'm opening for Lee Camp um, in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and uh, a bunch more cities. Go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Uh, details are available there. Tour dates are available there. Videos are available there. Uh, so, you know, uh, check it out. I hope, I hope you guys will continue to support what I'm doing. Uh, it's imperative to keep, uh, keep supporting uh, independent voices, so keep supporting other independent voices. Support people like Lee Camp. Support people like Jimmy Dore and, and Ron Placone, Graham Elwood, uh, Anya Parampil and uh, Aaron Mate on the Gray Zone, uh, Rania Kalik, uh, Taylor Hudak. The, she's covering a lot of stuff about Julian Assange right now. Um, you know, support those folks because they need your support. Uh, independent media needs your support because we're getting we're getting attacked on on the on the regular. Uh, so, uh, very much appreciate it. I hope some of you guys can make it out to these live events. Um, uh, but until next time, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the road, folks.